Uh, okay, I was saying we start with some motivations. Okay, one of the most of uh, one of the nice things of uh, ADS CFT holography is that one can extract strong coupling uh, information, uh, information of the strong coupling dynamics of a gauge theory from gravity. But uh, I should say that after 15 years of holography. We can hardly say that we understand how this non-perturbative physics is encoded in, in gravity. And this is the type of question I would like to address. And in order to address this type of question, we need to know solutions of supergravity that are exact. Solutions of supergravity that contain also the non-perturbative information of the gauge theory. And nicely, we have an example of uh, this solution. The simplest one is F-theory. I remind you that F-theory is just like to be a supergravity with a varying axiodiladon uh, field, and uh, it describes a system of D7 brains and O7 planes. This is just the back reaction of this system. You have a, a, an axiodiladon that varies in the space time, and you can associate the F theory solution, which is just show, uh, choose how this uh, diladon varies on the space time. You can think of the diladon, axiodiladon field of the complex structure of a torus and think of F theory as an elliptic vibration and relate this solution to uh, the gauge theory that live on these D seven brains, which is just an eight dimensional gauge theory with maximal supersymmetry. And in particular, you can relate the axiodilaton profile that you know explicitly from the F theory solution to chiral correlators in this eight dimensional gauge theory. Or alternatively, if you are feel better with a four-dimensional gauge theory, we understand better this, uh, the series in four dimensions, you can think of this actual theory as the gauge coupling on a, D7, on a D3 brain probe of this geometry. Okay? And therefore, for example, the details of this elliptic vibration, I remind you, that I recall that the tau you can think always as uh, the complex structure of this tor, you can relate this, the details of the elliptic vibration, you can translate in the details of the gauge coupling running in the gauge theory, in the four dimensional gauge theory. This is a gauge coupling that in, in general we have one loop and instant corrections. All this information about one loop and instant correction is just encoded in the geometry, just in the details of the vibration. More recently, all this uh, has been derived directly from string theory. Essentially, you can compute the uh, uh, axiodilaton profile from these diagrams. You just uh, ask yourself is what is the rate of emission of an axiodilaton field from a system of D7 and O7 planes. In particular, the perturbative, the one loop correction to the gauge coupling comes just from the insertions of the axiodilaton field on a disk ending of a D7 or an O7 planes. While instantons, all the non perturbative corrections, come from insertions of the axiodilaton field on a D minus one brains. Okay? Then, what I, uh, uh, we would like to do is to generalize this picture. This is the simplest example we can imagine. Now, we would like to go to more involved examples. In particular, the next one will be type to be on case three. And in this case, the new feature is that you should add. D3 brains. And the question is how to generalize uh, these F theory constructions into type 2B solutions which contain not only D7 brains, but also D3 brains. Okay? Then we would like to construct exact solutions containing D7, D3 brains, and also D instanton, which will play the role of uh, non perturbatively complete solution. Okay, the outline is the following. First, I describe, uh, okay, what I will study is type 2B on K3 plus Neve Schwarz, Neve Schwarz, and Ramon Ramon fluxes. And I look for supersymmetric background. Okay, first I will describe this supersymmetry equations. I use the formalis of generalized complex geometry. And from this, uh, we will find, okay, the first, uh, the solutions locally are known by Gran and Polchinski. They, they wrote uh, some solution that describes systems of these seven D brains locally. What I, we will add to this is to the non perturbative completion of this solution. In particular, we will 
see that D brains create singularities in the same way that in F-theory, D7 brains uh, signs for singularities of uh, the elliptic uh, uh, fiber. Here, you, you, see that, uh, you will see that the D brains create a singularity, delta-like uh, source. Around what? Uh, around those, you will have some monodromies. This means that we will, find, we will look for solutions varying on a plane with some singularity, which are the D brain positions. And when you go around this singularity, you will come back to the same point up to a U duality transformation. This is for consistency, no? If I go around the plane, I should get back to the same theory, okay? Then uh, uh, we should impose that these monodromies should belong to the U duality group. And this is what we call, okay, I, I remind here what is the U duality group of type to be on K3 is of, of uh, okay, the, the scalars span a manifold which is O521 divided by O5 and O21, and the U duality group is just O521 set. Okay, it's just the. Okay, then what we name by U false is just that. We name by U false a solution which is defined on a plane up to. U duality transformation. I mean, in this plane, there will be points in which the solution is defined up to uh, an action of the U duality group. In particular, a supersymmetric solution will be spanned by a manifold, which is a sub manifold of the full uh, scalar manifold. I give here this is O2, 2 plus n, where n can be n equal 1, 2, or 3, and so on. And I will focus mainly in the simplest case, which is just n equal one. This will be O23 set. But O23 is the same as SP4, and SP4 is the modular group of a genus two surface. Therefore, these solutions we will see that you can interpret as a vibration over the plane in which you have, at each point of the plane, you have a Riemann two surface. Okay? In the same way you do for F theory, you, you always interpret F theory as a vibration over the space time with at each point you have a torus. Now you will replace the torus by the genus two surface where the periods of this Riemann surface uh, describe the moduli, uh, how vary the moduli of your theory over this plane. In particular, this Riemann surface, okay, I will, okay, well, what I'm saying before is that this Riemann surface can have points where the surface degenerates, and these are the positions of the d brains. There, there will be points in which the Riemann surface is regular, and points in which the Riemann surface degenerates, and these are the position of the d brains. And you can, we will see how extract all the information about the d brains from the monodromies around this point. And all this will be encoded in the hyper elliptic geometry. Therefore, essentially, you give me a vibration of a genus two surface, and from there, I can say you what is the brain content of the theory. This automatically will uh, define a solution of supergravity, non, which contains not only D3 and D7 brains, but also the instanton. This means a sac solution. And uh, I know what is the brain content of this from the monodromies. I will then go to some explicit examples describing regular and fractional brains on an orbifold, and then conclusions. Okay. Okay, supersymmetric vagua. Okay, uh, we are looking for solution uh, of this type. Type to be on R31 times C times K3. Okay, I take these answers for the metric. This D is on war factor, phi is the dilaton, and H is on function, I leave uh, Arbitrary. And H and F are just the Nevechoz, Nevechoz, and Ramon Ramon fluxes on the internal six dimensional space. Now, supersymmetry. Uh, okay, uh, as also was explained by, by for me, uh, it's bet better than work with uh, the Killing Spinor equation. You can uh, uh, write the supersymmetry equation in terms of a three form. Right, uh, written as a bilinear in the spinors and a two form, okay? And write the, all the killing spinor equation as a differential equations for this 
two and three form, and these are the equations. For example, if you forget our flux, if you turn off all the flux, this condition is just saying that omega is close and j is close, which is just saying that the, the internal manifold is the calabi yau where omega is the complex structure and j is the complex structure. Then the flux simply generalize, enter here and here and so on. The flux and the dilaton enter in all these uh, equations. And if you just plug these answers in this equation and define this combination of the fields, tau is the axial dilaton field, beta is the standard combination between the Ramon Ramon and the Neveshoa's two form flux over some two cycles of the K3. And sigma is a combination which involves the four forms and also the fluxes. If you define these combinations, you see that the, these equations translate in the condition that these three, these not three, n, there is n of this, depending on how many cycles you have, exceptional cycles you have in this uh, case three, sigma and tau, therefore n plus two, these n plus two fields should be holomorphic. Okay, then if you give me three uh, n plus two holomorphic function, this automatically defines a solution of uh, type two B supergravity. Clearly this cannot be the end of the story because we know that a, a holomorphic function if it's not constant on the plane should have singularity somewhere. Therefore we should also characterize what are these singularities and what happened around these singularities. And what they are is just the brains. And indeed, if you introduce the brains in this uh, picture, what happens is that this equation gets modified, this zero gets modified by delta-like source uh, uh, localized at the position of the brain. For example, uh, we always think of the brain which are points in this complex uh, plane and are uh, transverse to some cycle in the K3. P could be either three, five, seven. No? And if you just take this equation and just integrate both sides, you see from this side you get just one. I am integrating on a disk around the, 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 the D-brains and on the transverse space to the D-brains. Therefore, from, from one side I get just one. From this side I get, a, I can write as a contour integral around the boundary of the disk. Okay? And if I go further, you see that the, fact, uh, the uh, presence of a D-brain source implies that this quantity is not uniquely defined on the plane. When I go around set to set to the two pi i, I will pick up some holonomy for this quantity. And if I take the components of this, in other words, if I put p equals three, five, and seven, and uh, compare with the definition of tau, sigma, and beta, you see that this monodromy is nothing else but the chief or tau, the chief of the betas, or a chief of the sigma. Okay? Then the presence of D3, the presence of D7 brains, uh, create a monodromy tau goes to tau plus one. Presence of a D3 brain create a monodromy sigma sigma plus one. And the presence of a D5 brain wrapping a cycle CA on the internal manifold create a monodromy of this type. Clearly, in order to be supersymmetric, we know that D5 brains is not mutually supersymmetric with the T7 brain. Therefore, the volume of this cycle should be zero. Therefore, always, when I talk about five brains, I better mean a fractional. This is a D5 brains of zero volume, which means a fractional D3 brains. OK? For you can think either as a five brain wrapping a, a cycle of zero size or a fractional D3 brain. Okay, this is, then uh, what we conclude is that uh, tau, beta, and sigma are holomorphic functions on a punctual plane with non-trivial usuality monodromies around the brain's locations. Okay? Okay. Now, as I said before, in order that the theory is consistent, if I go around and come back to the same point, I should come back to the same theory. Up to a symmetry of the theory. 
And the symmetry of the theory is the U duality, this subgroup of the U duality group. Therefore, here I list all the generators of this uh, duality group. S and T are the SL2C of type 2B. Omega is an axionic shift. And R is the symmetry that exchange sigma and tau. Roughly, is the T duality around all directions on K3. Okay? Therefore, these are the generators. Any, any element of this group, you can generate with one of these, uh, with one of these uh, elements. For example, this was the presence. This was the one that was generated at the location of the D7 brains. This is the one uh, at the location of D5 brains. And sigma goes to sigma plus one can be fine from this exchanging tau and sigma. Okay, another important thing is that the six-dimensional metric, which can be written in this way, the six-dimensional metric I wrote, if I call nu to e to the model 4d and rewrite this in terms of the variables sigma, tau, and beta, you see that nu is this precise combination of sigma, and tau, and beta. And this, uh, uh, this combination is very... Uh, special because you see this combination is invariant on their all transformations except for S. You see tau and sigma, these do not change. These are the chief of the, uh, uh, the real part. By two, I mean here the imaginary part. Sigma two is the imaginary part of sigma, tau two is the imaginary part of tau and so on. Therefore, this uh, new transform only on their S. Okay? And transform in a particular way. Transform a, a, as a modular form of this group of weight one. I, I just take this uh, transformation and act with S, okay? But the, U dual, the metric should be invariant under U duality. This means that this function H should be also a modular form, such a way to compensate for the transformation of new. Okay? In particular, it should be a modular form of weight one again. I write uh, here, I define what I mean by a modular form of weight D. It's just something that transforms only on their S in this particular form. Okay? But okay, forget about the details. The important thing is that this quantity should be U duality invariant. And this fits how this H should transform on their U duality. Okay, now let's go into the examples. Okay. The first, uh, the simplest thing I can do is take n equal to zero. Okay? n equal to zero means that I have just tau and sigma. And I have the group is O2, 2 divided by O2 times O2. Okay? This group factorized as the square of SL2R divided by U1. And then you recognize that uh, this is uh, like a torus. Therefore, I can interpret again this tau as the complex structure of a torus and sigma as the complex structure of a second torus. Therefore, this is roughly a copy of F theory. It's just you take, instead of having an elliptic fabrication, you have just two torus. This is the more uh, stupid uh, generalization of uh, F theory. It's just a double elliptic fabrication. And uh, let me remind you some details about the uh, F theory or about the uh, elliptic vibrations. An elliptic vibration can be an elliptic vibration can be defined as a curve which is quartic in X, and the roots depend on set. Okay, the roots you have four roots, and the four roots define two branch cuts because Y is square root of that. And the periods, the periods of this, uh, you see, you have two different cycles, which are the two cycles of the torus. And the periods of these uh, cycles describe the complex structure of these torus. Okay? In particular, you can compute the tau in terms of set using this elliptic formula, which simply relates. You give me the roots in terms of set. I, and I just invert this formula and compute tau, okay? 
Therefore, once I give this, one, once I give uh, this curve, I know everything about how my module tau vary over my, over my space. In particular, it can happen at some point in which E1 becomes equal to E2. Imagine always EI like a function of set, let's say, six, uh, a linear polynomial set. Then you, you can ask yourself when E1 is equal to E2. This will have some solution set at some point. At this point, what happens is that this is zero. This means that this sigma two, theta two, should be zero. This means tau goes to infinity. Okay? Therefore, at the points in which one of this, those cycles degenerates, no, the, the modulus goes to infinity and pick up non-trivial monodromies. If I go around this point, you can see that tau goes to tau plus one, which means that there is a D7 brains at this point. Okay? Or what I'm saying is uh, what happened in F theory. I'm just trying to really remind you because exactly the same happened for the, for the D3 brains. I also re remind you that the D an F7 plane is something that has monodromy tau goes to tau minus four. And you can see that in this picture, if you just take a look uh, closer to this uh, helictic fabrication, this uh, object, the O7 brain with a uh, half a, negative tension. It's just uh, two D7 brains, but two very strange D7 brains, no? Which, in other words, the instant to resolve this D7, this O7 planes in two D7 brains. This is very, you can do very explicit all what I'm saying. You just take, take EI as CI set plus DI, okay? You ask yourself, what are all the possible degenerations? E1 goes to E2, there is one, because this is a linear equation instead. There is one solution. There is six possible, E1, E2, E1, E3, E1, E4. There are four times three over two. There are six points. And you can see that out of this 6.4 has a monodromy of this type, and two have very strange monodromy, but together make a monodromy of this type. And these do not have, for example, the problem that Massimo was mentioned, because locally, all the, all the objects have positive uh, tension. If you see a g, a, g, a g equal to zero, if you see a weak coupling, you would think, ah, there is a point of negative uh, tension, but uh, this is just resolved by incertain. Therefore, all what we are doing is exactly that. We are taking this picture and generalizing, adding more fields, and uh, the geometry will encode for us, for, for, for free, how this uh, process of resolution is, is made. For example, for DT brains, everything uh, I said is exactly the same. You just uh, wherever I put tau, you put sigma. Therefore, this system in general have D3 brains, O3 planes, D7 brains, and O7 planes. Okay, but now let's go to a more interesting example. Let's now go to n equal one. There, this means that you have tau, sigma, and beta, okay? This, uh, I say beta is uh, the flux around a two uh, exceptional cycle. This, this means you look for a, a manifold with only one exceptional cycle, which is just a singularity R4 over set two. Then you imagine this case three that develops at some point a set two singularity, okay? And you are uh, now asking, uh, how brains uh, wrapping fractional brains at this singularity are described uh, in, uh, at the non perturbative level. Okay, as I said before, O23 is the modular group of the genus 2 surface. This is the first observation. The second is that if you take these three moduli and organize in this form, you put tau, sigma, and beta. You see that this matrix omega transforms exactly as the period matrix of a genus two surface. Okay? And finally, if you look to the combination that appear in the metric, remember in the metric appear a particular combination of sigma, tau, and beta, this is just the determinant of imaginary of omega that for a Riemann surface of genus two, this should be always positive. And this is nice because this was 
in the method. This was exponential to the D, the, the work factor. Therefore, this should be positive. This means that if you construct an, a consistent genus 2 vibration, automatically this will satisfy the requirement that this is bigger than zero. You see, the problem in principle is very hard to solve. You say, I, 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 you should give me some set of holomorphic functions which have some monodromies in the U-duality group and satisfies the property that the, should be, this quantity should be positive everywhere. This is very hard. But now you can use all the mathematical uh, apparatus because you know that this is automatic, this condition that this is positive, and the, the fact that the monodromy should belong to the U-duality group is automatic if you uh, uh, take a, a fibration of a genus 2 surface. Because a fibration has this property, that if you have a singularity, when you go around, you should come back up to a transformation of the modular group. And you have the property that this quantity is positive. Okay? Therefore, what we are doing is we are borrowing, borrowing this, uh, the mathematical, all the, what is known about hyper vibration, which is uh, a lot. We will automatically, no, for, we will have for free several, an infinite class of new supersymmetric vacua, which are uh, exact at the number two particle level. This means that all this vacua will describe in the same way that the, that the same description of S theory described a system of these seven brains at the number two partif level, this will describe a system of these three and these seven brains at the number two partif level. Okay. I give also here some details about the, the geometry. This is just to give you an idea that the, it's not so complicated as uh, you would imagine at the first uh, side. Essentially, what you write is a curve which is just a sextic. I mean, it's, uh, it's given by y squared equal to a polynomial of order six, okay? Where is this ei, which are the roots, now you have six roots. Six roots define three branch cuts, and three branch cut means a genus two surface because you have, you see, uh, four non-trivial one cycles, no? And then from the periods of this, uh, uh, from the periods around uh, this uh, non-trivial cycle, you can read what is omega, the period matrix, okay? Therefore, you give me this curve, I compute omega, no? You give me a curve means you give me some function of set. E to i for me means E2 minus EI in set. Therefore, you give me this site, okay? I use these three formulas that you find in any uh, book of mathematics. And you can compute what is omega in terms of set, okay? By the way, uh, if you want to think in physical terms, remember that the genus 2 surface, the genus 2, uh, the most general genus 2 uh, curve can be seen as the, uh, the cyber and Witten curve for SU3 gauge theory with matter in the fundamental. Therefore, you can also uh, use all the intuition you have from cyber and Whitting to learn about the generations because I, remember, I remind you that this genus 2 surface can degenerate at some point. For example, here can generate this cycle. This cycle will correspond to a D7 brains or the other cycle which correspond to D3 brains or the one will correspond to the D5 brains. Therefore, from this curve, I know, uh, I know everything. I should just extract what is omega, see where it degenerates, what is the monodromy around this degeneration, the monodromy say me what is the brain content, uh, and so on. For example, let's uh, consider a particular uh, example. Let's take, for example, the, vol the limit of large volume and weak coupling. This means sigma and tau. A sigma and tau going to i infinity. Okay, I just go back to this uh, formula. Oh my God. I just go back to this form. These are the theta functions. Sorry, by the way, I did say these are the theta functions of the genus two surface. I come here and put this uh, omega was sigma and tau. I put infinity and infinity here, very large, and see what happened to 
C2, C4, and C6. And what I find is that C2 is going to 0, C4 is 1, and C6 is your sine square of pi beta over 2. Okay? I remind you that C6 is a function of set. The function of set that in some sense is arbitrary because you can choose whatever you want. Any choice of C6 will give a different uh, vibration. Okay, then from this I can compute cosine of 2 pi beta, which is just a, a combination of this C psi, C6. And cosine of 2 pi beta is invariant on the beta goes to beta plus 1. Therefore, this, be, this should be a function of set. Uh, 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 this should be a function with no holonomy of set. Okay? I write as a ratio of polynomials, also using the fact that at infinity, I know also that beta should go like log of uh, set to n log of set with the beta function. I know that the, the, uh, how it should go at infinity. So I like uh, write as the ratio of polynomial. And if I solve this equation, beta, what I find is this expression, which is exact, exactly match, okay, as one should expect, with uh, the solution of supergravity found uh, by, first by Cremonesi, and, and then very recently by st string theory techniques by the collaboration between Turin and Rome, is this exactly describes the profile of the two-form field of a system of N0 and N1 fractional DT brains on R4 divided by Z2. Therefore, you see that this uh, solution, which uh, was known, was our first motivation to look into this supergravity size is just a corner of this very rich uh, uh, hyper, uh, hyper elliptic uh, geometry. Theref okay. For example, we can ask, uh, you can ask yourself, what are the degeneration points of this, uh, of this curve? For example, when beta have a non-trivial monodromy uh, when this function here has a non-trivial monodromy, and when you go set, go to set to the set, go to set to the times e to the two pi i. For example, the first one is that is this quantity is zero. If p zero is equal to p one, you see that this is a square root. If you go around, these two square roots change between themselves, and therefore this is a monodromy beta goes to minus beta. Okay, if P1 is equal to zero. You see that this term cancel, therefore this will be a log, a log set uh, 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 function, which has a monodromy, beta goes to beta minus one. And if you go to set goes to infinity, this goes beta goes to beta plus n zero minus n one. Okay? Which is the monodromy for n zero minus n one fractional brains. Okay? This means that this system have n0 minus n1 fractional brains, as I expect from the gauge theory side. Clearly, I can do something more general here. I just write this term because I want to match with the system that I know from the n0 and n1 fractional DT brain. But this is more rich. Here I can get other solutions that I cannot uh, get a direct interpretation in generally. Let me say that in general, if you give me a hyperelliptic uh, curve, this will be in general a non-geometric background. Therefore, I don't expect that I can interpret any uh, vibration of a genus 2 as a system of, uh, it's a complicated system of these three and the seven brains, but will contain PQ, PQ brains, will contain a lot of, uh, of things that I cannot describe as weak coupling in general. Therefore, all these uh, solutions are essential, uh, are, uh, genuinely non-perturbative uh, solution. Okay. Then the last example I want to describe is, the ca is a case in which you have both regular and fractional brains. And is a, is a, I choose the simplest uh, polynomial of order six, six that I can factorize. This is just to be very explicit, okay? And I, I, I choose in this form because you can see, if you compute the periods of this curve, that at set equal to infinity, tau, sigma, and beta goes to a constant. 
and g equal to zero means that tau goes to infinity. The, this means that the weak coupling in the string theory corresponds to this parameter I put here uh, equal to zero. By the way, this curve is also the curve of SU3 gauge theory with uh, fundamental uh, matter, where G is the gauge coupling of that theory. But this is an auxiliary gauge theory that we don't understand what is the meaning here. It's just because uh, it ha is give a hyperelliptic curve. Now, what are the roots of this polynomial? Here I, I list the roots. And then I, I ask myself, for which set some of these roots collide? Okay, these are the, the generations. There are three points. Po one point is m cubed, in which a one is equal to a two, a three, four, and a five, six. One point is g m cubed, in which this happens, and another point in which this happens. Okay? You see, no, for example, if I put set equal to g m cubed, this cancel. Minus this cancel, and if I put m cubed here, this comes uh, equal to that. Okay? Therefore, these are the three degeneration points. And if you compute the monodromy around this point, you will see that if I go around, I do a circle around set equal to mq, tau goes to tau plus 4, sigma goes to sigma plus 4, and beta goes to beta plus 2. This means that the, at this point, you have these seven brains, these three brains, and these five brains all together. If I put g equal to 0, Again, you see, it happened, what happened for F theory, that the, the all planes resolve into two D7 brains. Here happened very much the same. You have two points, which have very complicated monodromies, but the, if I do a circle around the two points, I just get the opposite charge, which means that these are oriented for planes. These are D brains because they have positive charge. These have a negative charge. Here, this is not, the fact that this is minus, this is not a problem because we will know that these are really two systems, okay? Uh, in other words, uh, these are you, two. Yeah. Okay, I go to the conclusions. And, okay, what we have seen is that the, we can construct a exact solution of type 2b supergravity, which contains D3, D7, and D. This can be seen as a generalization of F theory, which you add D3 brains or you add flux, as you prefer. Okay, but the important thing is this D instant. The D instant remain, I remember you from the beginning. If you don't put the D instant, you will find that tau, the profiles, will have logarithmic singularities. The D instant add a tower of correction to these logarithmic singularities in order to make the geometry smooth. In particular, for example, the oriented fold plane gets resolved into D brains and so on. Okay, then supersymmetric solutions I characterize by holomorphic functions, tau, sigma, and beta, defined on a punctual plane of two U dualities. Uh, this is very nice. The D brain contains, you can read this completely from the U duality uh, monodromies. Therefore, once you give me the geometry, I know what is the brain interpretation of this system. I stress the fact that, in general, this uh, system will not have a geometric interpretation. Each, each uh, curve you give me that has a monodromy that involves also the t-duality, let's say the change of sigma and tau, will not have an interpretation from the 10-dimensional point of view. Okay? Clearly, half an interpretation or is non-geometric from the 10-dimensional point of view. It's geometric from the six-dimensional point of view, from the uh, point of view of the six-dimensional supergravity. If you work with six-dimensional supergravity, this is on the same footing than the geometric uh, the compactification. Okay. Uh, I, I explain in detail one, the simplest example, which is the case in which you have a single beta. In general, you have a a set of beta, in the case in which you have a single exception of cycle, which is just a set two singularity, and explain how in this case you have a genus two vibration over the plane. By the way, it would be nice to see if you can generalize this picture to the general case. For example, what would be the next uh, case? Because O42 is not the modular group of uh, another surface. Therefore, the interpretation will change. And in particular, it's nice that the periods of the curve 
describe the axial dilaton, the warp factor, and the schwarz and the Ramon Ramon flux. In some sense, the geometry gives you everything what you need to describe the supergravity dissolution. Okay, there are several things that uh, you can do. Uh, as I say, the deep brain interpretation, I just, we just work it out the simplest case, because in this case, the solution was known, but there are several others that we left, and would be nice to understand uh, if we can learn from this. And also, it would be nice to understand if we can learn from this non-geometric background, because now we have a tool that uh, gives me something which is non-geometric. Can I learn something from this solution? I take one solution in which, uh, uh, which involves this T-duality. In other words, when you go around, you come back up to T-duality transformation mixed with uh, an S-duality and so on. Uh, uh, and it would be nice if one can understand uh, better these uh, non-geometric backgrounds. Okay, there are several other things. For example, defi brain solutions. I just did this 3D7. Uh, and uh, what, uh, what we can say about n equal one solutions. Uh, what, uh, you see, in all my talk, uh, in the, from the very beginning, I use this uh, generalized complex geometry with just the notation in, in the n equal one terms. Therefore, I, I think that all this you can generalize to n equal uh, to one. Of, of course, with some effort, but it should not be impossible because the idea should be, again, the same. You have deep brains, and deep brains you will have some non-trivial monodromes. So it should be nice to, say, to be able to say something more about this. Thank you.